Welcome to another STI swap video. All right, we're actually gonna start this video off with a little bit of bad news. The forged pistons did not end up showing up to the motor guy yet. So we're not picking up the motor tomorrow, which today's Friday. So we're not picking up the motor Saturday anymore. So we're waiting for the pistons to come in. So our plan for today is, is we're gonna finish cutting the tubs, probably start working on swapping the fuel pumps and start working on getting the blast plates on the trans. And I'll explain what all that's got to do with it when we get there to work on it. First, I just noticed, I think my exhaust fell off the hangers. Oh, yep, there you Exhaust off the hanger. All fixed. That's not hanging out too low anymore. Well, we made it. Oh. Man, dailying that thing is making me fall back in love with it, and that's not good because I need to sell it. A gander where we left off. No engine, engine's out. We have one tub cut. If you didn't see the last episode, we cut this tub because we were gonna do both and we ran out of time. So you have one tub cut. We're gonna we're gonna match this, but over here we're gonna have to take out the battery and the washer fluid and some of the stuff over here to get access to the tub. That way we don't accidentally cut stuff. But we're going to, and then we also need to get the flapper disc and clean all of this up because it's all sharp and not good. Remove the battery, which is two 10 mils. And we also got to take off the positive terminal. Oh, I'm really trying to do that. Oh. Luckily, we don't have to cut anything out of the battery tray like over there because it's on the flat spot. But as you can see, the tub is over here. So now we've exposed the front. So now it looks like we need to get the washer fluid reservoir out. And it looks like the fuse box sits high enough that we don't need to worry about it. So we need to get the washer fluid box out and then we'll be good to go, I think. And we'll also have to take the wheel off because it's better to cut from underneath. Get those two out. We've got to get the pumps. So we've got to get the pumps unplugged. Oh, there's one. Okay, everything disconnected for real this time. Oh, we're, we're leaking. I'm gonna set this up so it don't leak. So we're gonna probably start back here, cut and cut along the side of the tower so you can get, you don't wanna go far up on this cause it's a structural. So you wanna go just barely on this. That way you get, you know, the whole thing out. So you don't rub, you don't lose any structural integrity cause none of this is structural. I decided to move the fuse box because some of this wiring was a little too close for comfort. So we have that out of the way. That's where I rub. I rub all right here and all down the middle. Anyways, I'm gonna grab the grinder right there, put you guys on a time lapse and get started on it. grab the uh the enforcer there you go now that's all out and we managed to save all the wires we didn't nick anything but now we need a flappy disc to clean up all this garbage flappy disc on we're gonna start the side we just did and then we'll move over to the other side so this is what i'm talking about we might need to make it just a little bit nicer Maybe because there's like this there. I missed the cut so we just straighten that out a little bit And then right here probably just cut this off right here So it's not at that sharp point and just bring it up kind of across right here Switch to a cutoff wheel and just cut across this right there and then just fix that That's all cleaned up, looks way better. We got plenty of clearance now. So if I put everything back in, I can't paint it. I don't have any paint with me right now. So I just threaded in the bolts so I didn't forget where they go. And we'll come back to paint that another day because I don't have any paint. 
I think our next thing of order or our next thing to do off the list would be to do the fuel pump. And the fuel pump is just in the trunk over here. We have this. This is not an AEM fuel pump. My buddy put an AEM fuel pump in his STI. And so this is his stock STI fuel pump that had like no miles on it. Anyways, we're gonna throw this STI fuel pump in the Forester. I have a bunch of parts back here. We have the cold air intake, the turbo inlet hose. We have a full NVIDIA exhaust. Blast plates for the trans and the access port is in here along with some gauges. This is the stage two street clutch. This outlet will give us some more room. I just gutted the whole trunk. I took the sub and everything out. Should be right under there. We're gonna have to take the assembly out, probably disconnect the lines. That way disconnect the plugs and everything. That way we can get the whole assembly away from the car. And then we'll have to rewire that pump in somehow, or we I think we'll have to depin. So I'm sure the stock pump that I have has a plug on it. Probably not the same plug, who knows? If it was the same plug, that'd be awesome. I don't know what the other fuel pump looks like. I don't know if we'll have to buy like a plug and depin and repin it to like this type of plug. We'll see. We're gonna pull it out and then we're gonna find out. This thing is covered in dirt. I never took this car off road. This has gotta be all from when they lived in, when they had it in Mesquite, Nevada. What did they do? Okay, well I cleaned up the, uh, I cleaned off all the dirt because if any of that dirt got in there, into the fuel tank or anything, I would be screwed. All right, well, I got the pump out after like an hour and a half of trying to get a hose off. And I split one of the hoses, which means I'm gonna have to replace one of the fuel lines and that sucks. Let's take a look at it though. I haven't looked at it too closely. It does have a plug. Guys, it is literally the same plug. Plug. <gasps> this is a fuel pump out of our 2012 STI. This is a 2001 Forester. And they're still using the same fuel pump plugs. I love Subaru for things like that. All right, now let's set up a time lapse of me probably struggling to switch the fuel pumps around. Boom, pump is all switched over. I had to shorten this hose just a tad and then we're not using this rubber thing because it was flaking off everywhere and I didn't want it to get in the fuel pump. So it sits in there, it's good in there. Plug fits, just plugs in. I call that good. That's done. And that's halfway done, we'll put half a check mark. <laughs> All right, day two, we're gonna have to pull everything out of the trunk again to get back to the pump. But as you guys know, we had that split line. So I'll show you what we bought. We bought one of these so we can put the OEM line on one side and then a new line on the other side to extend it a bit. Some extra fuel line, some extra clamps. And I think we'll be good. Well, now it looks like we don't even need this thing because this hose goes on this one. It's like you can just shove it on. I don't know. We're gonna see real quick. We might need to like shorten this more and put this on. Plug this one back in. Well, that actually went on there. 
without needing to do the extension trick. So grab this guy and throw it on the end right there. Cool. Last thing to do after all of those and everything is back on and tight, throw this cover back over the top. Guys, that's where we're in this episode. We now finished the fuel pump. We had half a check mark where the fuel pump is. Now we get a full check mark. That's a V. It's a check mark in my heart. Okay. But we're good now. We've made some good progress. I'm still going to keep working on it today, but there's just going to make another video. I just don't want to leave you guys hanging with half a fuel system done. So we got the fuel system done. We got the tubs cut. Remember that? Still got to paint those. That's where we're going to end it. Everyone, thank you for watching. Keep watching the Forest STI swap. Should be done in the next couple weeks. I love you all. Peace.